Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Russell and this is my technique for getting to sleep. I've been talking about doing this video for forever uh, and finally doing it because it's raining outside and not much is going on here. So I'm going to jump right into the technique and talk about how this, how to do this um, so that if you're referring back to this video, you don't have to wade through a lot of crap to get here. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk about why this works. And it's very important you understand why it works. If you don't understand why it works, you're not going to do it. It won't make sense to you and you're not going to do it. So really important. Stick around for that. So let's jump right into the technique. Uh, there's four parts to this, four very important parts. And it's really all about getting setting your mind and your body at rest. Because that's what needs to happen for you to sleep. Calm mind, calm body. It'll work. Okay, so number one is breathing. And your breathing, really, you're just trying to mimic somebody who's asleep. Have you ever, If you've ever listened to somebody sleeping and they're breathing, that's what you're trying to do. So here it goes. It's like this. So it's nice and comfortable. You don't have to go in through your nose or through your mouth or any sort of thing. Just comfortably breathe long, deep breaths. And as I said, listen to a sleeping person next time you get a chance and you just and just try and mimic what they do. All right. The second part of this is relaxing your body. Um, so it works with your breathing. It goes like this. Breathe in. And as you exhale, relax. Breathe in. Relax and envision uh, your body relaxing like a wave going down your body or maybe ripples in a pond. Relax. Like going all the way through. You're right to your fingertips, right to your toes. Breathe in. Relax as it goes out. Okay? That's the first two parts of this technique. Pretty basic, pretty pretty ordinary. Nothing too drastic here. Uh, the third part is you got to calm your mind. You got to stop all those synapses from firing off. You got to like... Um, put it to rest. And here's how you're going to do it. Um, I would say, you know, clear your mind, think of nothing, but that's like almost impossible to do. right? So instead, you're going to think about your breathing and you're relaxing. That's it. Um, you, and, you know, you're going to be thinking about, okay, I'm breathing in. I'm relaxing. You don't have to say those words in your mind. Just picture what your body is doing. Picture your chest rising, your diaphragm rising as you're breathing in. And then picture your whole body relaxing as, as you're breathing out. And that's pretty much it for kind of focusing your mind. Yeah, that's all you want to do is think about, and that'll stop all the weird synapses from firing. That's just going to like, just, just a, a tiny bit of your mind is going to be working. The tiniest bit of your mind is going to be working on that focus. Now, the fourth step of this is the, by far the most important. Um, as you are fall, as you're going through this process, you're going to find that your mind will start to wander. It will happen. It will happen every time. Uh, as soon as you realize your mind has started to wander, um, start over again. Because when your mind wanders, you're going to stop that breathing. You're going to stop that relaxation. You're going to be, the whole thing has ended. Your mind has started to wander again. Um, but when, you, as I said, when you realize your mind has wandered, start over again. Breathe, relax, focus. Breathe, relax, focus. And it's going to happen again. Your mind will start to wander. Again, just reset. Go back to the breathing, relaxing, focus. And if, it, if your mind starts to wander again, and then again, and then again, just keep doing it. Just keep resetting, and then eventually you're going to fall asleep. And that's pretty much the technique right there in 3 minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> so uh, we get to the, why does this work? And why is it important that we know what's happening when we're, when we're going through this? Okay, let's go through each thing. I think the first thing I'll go through is the relaxation. That's pretty, pretty um, self-evident. It's pretty obvious that your your body needs to be relaxed. So just relax, right? Um, breathing is also um, a good one. I mean, breathing, you're you're really kind of just jump-starting your sleep. You're already getting into the breathing mode that you're going to be in when you're asleep anyway, right? So um, let's start doing it first off. And and. Also, by breathing like that, long, deep breaths, you're oxygenating your body and you're giving yourself a slight bit of euphoria when you do that, when you oxygenate yourself like that. So, and that's going to help too, that little bit of euphoria. It's going to put you in the right state for sleep. Um, the third thing, of course, calming your mind, focusing just on that one thing. I would say, you know, if if you didn't like focusing on your breathing, relaxing, you could try something else, something really simple, like you're lying on a beach. You know, and you can hear the waves, you know, the ocean kind of coming in and going out. And you can feel the sun on you and you 
the sand in your fingers, if you could just focus on that and keep your breathing and relaxing going, because that's kind of key, uh, then do that. But I, I think that I think that's actually hard to do to, to focus on something else and keeping your breathing and relaxing thing going on. So those three things, pretty, pretty obvious, those ones, because as we know, you're trying to calm your body, you're trying to calm your mind, you're trying to relax, right? Put yourself in a state for, for sleep. The fourth thing, though, is what we're going to spend our time on. And it's by far the most important, this reset business. Um, I should probably pause here and put in a couple of caveats. Like if uh, this is for regular people who are having problems sleeping, this isn't like if you've got chronic um, insomnia or if you've got medical or physical things that are keeping you awake at night, that's probably not going to help you. But for the average guy like me who has trouble sleeping every now and then, this is I'm sure this is going to help. Also, um, this is for regular bedtime. This isn't for like, geez, I need, I just woke up from 10 hours of sleep and I want to go, uh, I've been awake for an hour and I want to go back to sleep. That's probably not going to work. <laughs> I've tried that before. I've tried where I've slept seven hours. I thought, oh, let's get one more hour in. I couldn't do it. It's, it goes on. But generally, it, it takes me about two to five minutes of doing this technique. Like if I'm tr having trouble falling asleep, it takes me about two to five minutes to get to sleep, though. I think the worst ever was like 10 minutes. Um, and it takes some discipline to do this as well. Um, and I'll show you why in a sec. Uh, anyway, let's let's get into um, this screen. Oh, it's black. It's black, Russell. Okay, here we go. So this is, I got this off the web. This picture is kind of everywhere. Everybody uses it. Um, a typical eight-hour sleep cycle. And we're not going to get into the stages of sleep or what happens while you're asleep. Obviously, you've got a deep restorative sleep going on here. Where's my mouse? Um, let's pick a fun color here. You've got, uh, okay. So you, 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 um, you start from awake, you fall asleep and you go into stage one, you quickly go to stage four, where it's that deep restorative sleep. You pop up to REM, you go back to deep restorative sleep, back up to REM, not quite so deep sleep, REM, not, the, you see where we're going here. This stuff really isn't important for what we're talking about today. Um, this will be important when I do a video on lucid dreaming, which is kind of what this leads to. Lucid dreaming is easiest here in this in this stage where you're closer to consciousness. And I don't, I don't feel that these are quite right. I think you have different levels of REM as well. Because when I, if I have a lucid dream down here, I'm in there for good and it's solid and those are the best lucid dreams. It's easier to lucid dream up here. It's but the the dreams are better at this stage. Anyway, we're not talking about this. We're talking about this area right here between awake and asleep. So let me switch to another screen here. Ah uh, yes. This is a graph. <laughs> it may not look like it, but above that top red line or at that top red line you're, you can't really be more than 100 percent conscious right <laughs> can you maybe with drugs that's another caveat if you're like on drugs <laughs> everything can change anyway and if you're below at or below that bottom red line then you're asleep right and as i said we're really talking about this this tiny little spot right here right we're not talking about any of this other just this spot where uh between waking or 100 percent conscious and asleep and this is what I call the loopy, the loopy area, loopy. You can't see that, can you? Now let me let me try somewhere else. This is the loopy, the loopy area, um, and I call it that because this is um, kind of when, say, you're on the couch and you're watching TV and your eyes start to get a little heavy and you're nodding. You're you're you know you're not quite asleep, but you're not 100 percent conscious either. You're just kind of in that loopy phase um it's hard to it's hard to concentrate when you're in that loopy phase you're thinking oh i really want to watch this episode of brooklyn 999 i can barely keep my eyes open um but think about times when you're you're working on something let's like say you're doing your taxes or something like that and you're nodding off and you're like oh and you know you need to concentrate you can't be in this loopy phase to concentrate on what you're doing right it's it's it's, it's really difficult uh and this is important uh because we need to understand what's happening between the point where we're 100% wide awake and we're asleep for what we're about to talk about. So 100% awake, um, you put on your pajamas, you get into bed, you get in your comfy position, you start the breathing, the relaxing, the focusing your mind on your body, what's happening. 
And here's what happens. Let's get a uh, paintbrush and let's get a wonderful color like blue. Here we go. We start breathing, relaxing, focusing our mind, and we're starting to head towards sleep. Except that we are now in the loopy area. And as I just as I just discussed, uh, when you're in your loop area, it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to focus, right? So uh, your mind starts to wander. And as your mind starts to wander, this sort of thing happens. And you, and when you've lost concentration on your breathing and relaxing, well, you stop breathing and you stop that whole breathing and relaxation um, routine, right? And you start to go up. Now, if, if you just continue to let your mind wander because you're loopy or whatever, you might continue to go right back up to that line where I think a lot of people have trouble with you know, their mind is wandering and they can't, they just keep bumping back up to that line. It might not quite be like that. It might be more like, and eventually, you know, for, for lots of people who have trouble sleeping, they'll just keep doing this like all night long and or for an hour. And then eventually they're so exhausted that they fall asleep anyway. But let's go back. This is the point where your mind has started to water and you catch it and you say, hey, oh, my mind has started to water. Let's start over again. Sorry, my camera just cut out. Um, so this is the point where um, you, you've caught yourself. You're, saying, you're going to say, let's start over again. Breathing, relaxing. And what's going to happen is this. You go up a little bit and then you start going down again. And then you're still in this loopy phase. So it's going to happen again. Your mind is going to start to wander. You're going to stop your breathing, relaxing. It's going to start to come up. And you're going to say, oh, mind has wandered. Start again. Let's start again. Here we go back down and now you see what's happening now you see why this reset is important now you see why um you gotta you gotta be disciplined in, in doing this right eventually you're going to keep uh mind is on water you're going to keep resetting and then zip, boom way down into deep sleep and each stage here each of these stages where your mind has started to wander you will say to yourself Let's use a different color here. You will say to yourself, it ain't working. Now, Russell, it's not working. Nope. Because you don't you don't realize that you're in the sleepy stage or where you are between 100% consciousness and asleep. You don't understand because you're in that loopy phase. And you don't realize it because you're just lying down and your eyes are closed and you're, you know, you don't get it. Um, so each time, each at each of these X's, you're going to say, Russell, it's not working. It's not working. Um... But what you should be saying is, as soon as you realize your mind has started to wander, you should realize that it is working. Because that's what you want to happen. Your mind starts wandering mean, means that you've gone into this loopy phase that, that you know, you are starting to fall asleep. You are heading down towards that sleep bar. And, you, and every time you, your mind starts to wander and you realize it, you should go, ah, I'm falling asleep. Start again. Ah, I'm falling asleep. Start again. And that's pretty much how the technique works. So, and that's why it's important to understand, you know, what's happening as you're going through this. Because if, as I said, if you if you miss this part of the video and you just you just tried the technique, you wouldn't think it's working at all. But it's when your mind starts to wander that you know that it is working. Um, and I should say that you know, if you practice this every night, it becomes second nature. It really does. It's like as soon as you lie down in bed, you'll start doing it automatically, breathing, relaxing, and it's really a wonderful thing. And, and if you wake up at two a.m. or three a.m. and you're trying to get back to sleep, you'll go right back into this, and it works like a charm. So you got to get up at two a.m. and and go pee or something like that. And here's a here's a, uh, an additional tidbit I found that helps, and I don't know why, but if you got to get up in the middle of the night to pee, keep one eye closed as you go to the bathroom. And come back. I don't know why it works, but it does. It helps. It helps you get back to sleep. It's like, it's like half your brain is <laughs> still in darkness or something. I don't know. Stupid, but it works. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much. That's pretty much it for the tea technique and how to. I want you to try it. Give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Ask in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. But but give it a try and let me know how it works. As I said earlier, um, between two and five minutes, typically, usually closer to two minutes of doing this. And as I said, it takes it takes some um, it takes work. It, it's not something that comes naturally. Getting into bed and letting our mind wander is something we've been doing all our lives. Um, so it's it takes discipline to do this. And you you know, I don't like doing it sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I need to get to sleep, but I don't feel like doing this, so I'm just gonna let myself fall asleep. <laughs> And then sometimes it's like, oh, no, I really want to fall asleep. Let's go through this and do this. And then usually less than two minutes, I'm asleep. So anyway, as I said, let me know how it works. And we'll uh, see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.